welcome back to yet another political episode. So we had some news yesterday. We got two candidates declared. Donald Trump from Florida and Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina. Now a lot of you guys have um, told you told you all my their beliefs on Nikki Haley. I have met some Haley supporters and I asked their support on it. Uh, now do um, a lot of uh, a lot of input on Haley is kind of negative. Uh, first off, we kind of have to look at Nikki Haley's electoral history, okay? Um, so, when she was governor of said South Carolina, um, going down, um, and so... You'll see, I'm going to purposely skip these uh, representative elections. I'm going to look to that governor election um, of 2010. Um, it does not have any links to it, which is means I have to look at it myself. So you can see, um, people are concerned about Nikki Haley, Republicans especially. You can see... Haley underperforming the typical GOP performance in um, South Carolina. You'll see Nikki Haley receiving a 51% of the margin, while um, Vincent Sheehan, Sheehan um, her running mate, uh, I mean her opponent, excuse me, has a 646%. Usually, uh, Democrats have a below a 40 percentage range. Um, Haley can't even get above 50%, barely got above 50%, showing a huge, weak performance. Um, and you can see here, uh, polls were actually saying Vincent Sheehan was going, actually no, this is the Democratic primary, excuse me, um, polls uh, were predicting a Haley win. Uh, you could see there are some sources that were saying like Rothenberg said safe Republican. Sabudo's crystal ball said likely Republican. And then there's at CQ politics and all real clear politics and quick political report. Uh, they both are saying leaning Republican. So they are showing uh, through the polls. They even said that Haley was a little weak in the performance anyway. And in 2010, which was a red wave year, uh, she performed kind of weak as governor. Going to, uh, the internet lately has been trash, so if you will excuse me. Um, so what we're going to do now is, maybe I can, you guys get the picture, um, here. Um, and what it's looking like. So... Let's just take a look. Haley versus Biden. Um, is Haley capable of beating Joe Biden? Both of the candidates are very beatable. Uh, very weak. Uh, Biden has the support of young individuals. We got to keep in mind there are Democrats, that hardcore Democrats, that don't like Biden at all. But they're very hardcore they don't like Republicans. They hate Republicans more than Biden. So they're probably going to go and vote for Biden. Okay? Um, a lot of uh, young Democrats feel that Biden's just too old. That they need a younger uh, generation to lead the country. And that would be Nikki Haley. She comes from that younger generation. Um, but um, is, is, she, is she capable in winning now according to her performance in south carolina and her recent elections in 2014 they were i can tell you the 2014 election was not a good election for haley another election she uh did very poorly in but the question is can she do good in this election now um it really depends uh if she's going against gavin newsom uh haley's probably gonna get destroyed but if she's going to fight against the Biden administration, who's being, who has been fired at for almost four years now, uh, about inflation, the immigration crisis, Ukraine, um, Afghanistan, um, all this stuff, they're all getting attacked by both Democrats and Republicans. 
And most Democrats, most Americans say, we don't want Biden anymore. We don't, we want, we don't like this administration. We want them to go. All right. Then is it, is hey, Nikki Haley worth voting, a, a voting for? So this is, and obviously this is going to, I, I don't know. I'm going to probably get some backlash from both of my channel either way. If I have Nikki Haley beat Biden, I'm probably going to get bashed by I, a bunch of realists saying that Nikki Haley is not capable of beating anybody. And if I dare beat Biden, I'm, go, I'm probably going to get bashed by the um, more conservative supporters of my channel saying that Biden is incompetent. He can't win any election. Okay? Um, so, it really, really, this is just, I'm just going to think really practically right now. Uh, really uh, logically on if what it would look like so once again be respectful in the comments this is just a prediction this is not what and these predictions will change so let's take a look here starting off with the obvious vermont being called for biden three electoral votes haley wins kentucky eight electoral votes we're giving the state of west virginia for haley and then the state of Maryland and Washington, D.C. going in for Biden. Um, Indiana is going in for Biden. Uh, I mean, for blah, Haley with its 11 electoral votes. Biden easily winning the state of Illinois. Uh, it's 19 electoral votes. Illinois is a good, strong Democrat state. Nine, those 19 electoral votes is going to aid the Democrats very well. Um, trying to think here. What should I do now? Massachusetts. 11 electoral votes. Going for Biden. 46 electoral votes for the Biden camp. The state of South Carolina. Uh, Nikki Haley's home state is going for Haley. Alabama and Mississippi both are going in for Haley. Biden, Haley, very close at range. Oklahoma is another state that would probably go for Haley. These are the very obviously Republican states and the obviously Rep Democrat states we're doing not covering off first. Oh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming are going for um, Haley. And now we are tackling Connecticut, Delaware, Biden's home state, New Jersey. Very one for Biden. Biden will lead in the lead by 70 electoral votes. Um, North Coast. North Carolina, South Carolina. I, I, I'm having, a, should I call Florida now for Haley? We'll wait. We will wait. We're going to call Arkansas for Haley. Missouri. And Tennessee, uh, Florida. We know what directions it's most likely going to head toward, so we're just going to call it for Haley. Get it over with. Uh, 120 electoral votes. Haley in a good lead right now. Um, but that can all change instantly. Let's take a look at Rhode Island. Rhode Island going for Biden pretty easily. Democrat stronghold. Uh, New York. And then New Jersey and New Mexico. Well, New Mexico, as of right now, is too close to call. Here is our election right now, what it's looking like. Virginia, too close to call. Louisiana, going for Haley. Haley, uh, um, 20 points ahead of Biden. Nebraska, Idaho, and 
Utah, California, Washington, and Hawaii. Biden jumping up ahead at 172 electoral votes. Now we take a look here. We're looking at hmm. I'm trying to think here. It's getting more compatible. Kansas, Montana, calling it Colorado for Biden. Um, Florida has been called. That's good. I oh, Iowa. Texas is going in for Haley at 199. Ohio. Still a close race as we speak. Oregon is going in for Biden. Virginia for Biden. New Mexico for Biden. This is indeed a close election. Haley just in the lead by less than 10 points against the president. So, keep analyzing Arizona, Nevada, too close to call. Minnesota is easily won by Biden. Biden now ahead by two points. That two points can easily be surpassed. However, Biden triumphs in Maine. And along seeing with um, New Hampshire. Now, these are the states that are very too close to call. Alaska always call, is pretty much called last in the elections just because of their position and their time zone. I really think it affects how the election is played. Um, let's see here. This is how it's probably going to go. Michigan's going to go for Biden. <laughs> and we're going to call Nevada for Haley. Biden is capable in winning. So let's just take a look here. No, Georgia is just too close to call. So just like and just like North Carolina. Um, North Carolina, I do think, is going for Haley. We are going to call that. It's going for Haley. As I feel that uh, with Biden's record, I do think that the state he's not going to flip any states. Um, in 2024, there is no way that Biden can flip any states in 2024. And, and that's just thing. The last president that flipped a state in a re-election would be uh, George W. Bush. Back in 2004, he managed to flip uh, New Mexico and Iowa. That said, Obama failed to flip states in 2012. He and Donald Trump failed to flip states in 2020. So, um, the same most likely is going to be for Biden, especially with his record lately. So, uh, I'm going to give, this can always be changed, but for now we're calling Wisconsin for Haley. Uh, Pennsylvania is going for Biden. Biden is close to 270. Uh, taking a look here, this election's probably going to be pretty close. Now, if Biden wins either Arizona, Georgia, and Alaska, then he wins uh, this election. Um, and I'm going to pick between Arizona and Georgia. What should we, who should we give it to? I'm just, I'm going to call Arizona for Haley. This is a close one.
Georgia is going to Haley. Um, and don't yell at me. Um, in this scenario, Haley wins. Is it a GOP landslide? No, it will not be a GOP landslide. Um, but I do, my opinion, I do think Haley has a chance in winning because of Biden's record. That is only if Haley faces off Biden. But, but Haley would probably win by like one point or just five points. It's not going to be a GOP landslide. No way. Uh, like I said, Haley is a weak candidate. Let's take a look at 2014. Um, oh yeah, okay. Haley performed a little better by a couple points. But still, undermining the usual performance done by Republicans in South Carolina. Let's take a look at this result here. Oh yeah, McMaster, you did poorly too. Um, 2022, let's see here. You see, okay, maybe South Carolina isn't the most Republican state. It is a Republican hold, definitely. It's not on the top 10 though. Uh, thanks to, it's pro, thanks to uh, North Carol centrist North Carolina, uh, the popular states of Georgia and North Carolina, very popular, very urban, uh, ish climate. They have, they're kind of surrounding big orb of population there. Uh, but, um, that's just that. I mean, they did, Tim Scott did pretty good. Um, and of course, Alaska is going to Haley. So this is my opinion. Don't yell at me. And I'm not accusing anybody, by the way. But this is just the opinion. Um, I just, this was my, tro I don't, I, this is, was my same opinion for Trump, too. But I do think, uh, part, I, I acknowledge that Haley is a weak call candidate, and I agree. But also, you got to keep in mind that people are desperate. Even Democrats themselves are desperate. They do not want Biden for another four years. They're in a desperate situation. They want a younger individual. They want, they, they're going to turn to anything. And of, of course, there are hardliners like in New York, Minnesota, Car California, and Illinois. They're going to be like, no, blue all the way. Blue no matter who. They're going to go for Biden because he's a Democrat. He's that magical letter e, D by his name, and that makes him great. Um, so they're probably going to go for him, those hardliners. But there's also going to be centrists and pe uh, people that really don't care about politics. They just want things to be better. They're probably going to go for some anyone. You could be Haley or just a third party. Uh, and then again, is Haley going to play the game? Is Haley going to go out? Is she going to go pain? Is she going to go everywhere, even in her own states? Like, Georgia, Arizona, she has to go around, um, even, uh, somewhat compatible states like Minnesota, it can't, it, it, if you can get into the likely Democrat states, that can make a huge difference, so anyway, that is my prediction as of right now, um, if Haley is going against Biden, uh, let me know if you agree, anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next political episode.